Hello, plant people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're talking about tomatoes with odd anatomy and exactly what is what. So this, I want you guys to share with whoever is misinformed about trichomes and those warty little bumps that you find on tomatoes, because we're actually going to dive into the science of exactly what these are and why they exist because there is a ton of misinformation so this question actually was posed to me by another youtuber a much more successful youtuber than myself Masilla over at learn to grow and she said am i going crazy because all these big influencers keep on talking about trichomes as though they're roots and i could have sworn through my research that they're not roots and i want to go to an actual scientist a pro in the industry and ask is are these roots what are these and i'm here to tell you Trichomes are absolutely, positively, in no way, shape, or form a root at all. I'm sorry, they're just not. So she is right, she's correct, and Masilla, thank you so, so very much for actually applying the science to the garden, which is incredibly important when it comes to debunking misinformation and helping new gardeners and experts grow in the world of gardening. So let's jump into exactly what this is. But first, I want you to hit that thumbs up button. I will grant you a photo of a very cute animal that I own in my zoo. And uh, yeah, that's that's your payment. It's absolutely free and it supports the channel. So thumbs up and uh, let me know in the comments down below if you were misinformed by the trichome mystery. So trichomes, there are different types of trichomes. The two mass groups can be split into two. So there's glandular and then non-glandular. So glandular is something that emits oils and a substance. So in the example of tomatoes, we know that oil smell of a tomato or a marigold, that is a glandular trichome. Now other trichomes are there for very, very different purpose, such as protection of the actual plant from things like heat, sun, pests, things of that nature. So a great example of this is shade plants that have very fuzzy leaves that have a ton of different trichomes on it. That is a way of shielding the plant from the sun to protect that cuticle layer. Now with tomatoes, it's strictly as a scent to either deter insects or for some plants, it actually is to encourage them to come towards the plant to help with fertilization and pollination in general. So that is what trichomes are for. They are a completely separate organ that function unto itself. And if you actually look at a tomato plant, you will notice that a seedling has a higher density of trichomes than a full grown tomato plant. And there's a reason for this. The seedling is much more malleable. They have a very small epidermis cuticle. It can be crunched very easily. So it just needs that extra oomph to ward off pests. Whereas the older tomato plant doesn't have to put as much energy into prevention of pests because there's enough foliage there that if a few nibbles happen, the plant will be okay for the most part. So trichomes are not roots. They are a structure that benefits the plant hugely, but no matter how hard you try, they will never, never capture nutrients for you. What are roots are those really gross looking warty things you see on the sides of tomato plants. And I know you guys have seen these before. Those are roots, but they're not your typical root. A classic root that ends up branching off and causing root hairs, captures nutrients, releases exudates, helps just with the performance of the plant in general actually come from the node of the plant. So that is the area where the leaf connects to the stem. Inside of this node, there's a small area that is filled with meristematic stem cell tissue. This meristematic stem cell tissue is undifferentiated cell tissue, meaning it hasn't decided what its purpose is yet. So over time, when sun or air is applied to a meristematic cell, it will develop a leaf or a branch. Now, if that meristematic cell tissue is 
under cover of soil, darkness, and cool, it will develop into a root. This is what makes cuttings possible for both indoor plants and outdoor plants. It is this undifferentiated meristematic stem cell tissue. Say that five times fast and I'm sure you probably will not be able to breathe after, but anyways, I digress. That is not what those little balls are. Those little nubby looking wart things are something completely different. They are called roots of primordia, so primordial roots, also considered advantageous roots. And it's such a fitting name because what it is technically doing is it is making a bump that eventually will turn into a root, but the root itself doesn't function as a normal root. Well, it will do is it will eventually send out a runner that sometimes might make it to a, the soil, but sometimes may not and may just end up being like this stubby little air root, which is fine as well. But it is a sign for you to notice. What this little warty ball thing is telling you is that your plant is missing something. So it's really hard to say what it is. There's a ton of research going into it and no one really knows what primordial roots really mean, but it generally is a way of the plant trying to capture either extra nutrients or water. So take a look at the plant. If you're noticing those warty bumps, look at the leaves, look at the foliage, look at the overall growth of the plant, maybe the soil of, that the plant is growing in and try to determine what may be missing. Is it nutrients? Is the soil maybe too soggy? When you wiggle the branch, does it feel like there's not a lot of root mass underneath? Try to do some problem solving to figure out why your tomato plant may be sending out these aerial roots. And this goes for nearly any plant except for aeroids. An aeroid house plant sends out um, an air root. It's much, much different because that is the, the nature of that plant. But if it's a terrestrial plant, a plant that's meant to be grown in soil and it's sending out air roots, it's time to maybe check into exactly why. So there you guys have it. My rant is over, but that does not take away from the fact that you should seriously share this and try to get as many people on board with the science of gardening and the science of plants because trichomes, first off, are not roots and second off, those warts are roots but they're telling you something and it's not necessarily a good thing. If you guys enjoyed this video or if you learned something new, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, let me know in the comments down below if you knew anything about any of this. And if you're interested or invested in this channel or you wanna to get to know me just a little bit better, be sure to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, but I also have another proposition for you guys. It's completely non-obligatory. You don't have to do it, but every year I enjoy raising money for kids with cancer and this will cost you nothing actually. If you just want to join and you like biking, then this is definitely for you. You can join my team as <laughs> they like to call it. So it's the Great Cycle Challenge in Canada and it's to raise money for children with cancer. Now, I personally don't know any children with cancer, but I know adults with cancer, and I just, I couldn't even, I'm a cancer, that's my astrological sign, and I feel stuff for other people, probably not the normal way other people do. So when I hear of children with cancer, like literally I'm like tearing up right now, um, that really upsets me. So every year I like to do a cycling challenge where I pledge to cycle 200 kilometers in a single month while raising money for children. So you can join my team. I'll leave a link down below. Like I said, it costs you no money. Like you don't have to pay a single thing. You can pledge to do one bicycle ride a week, for example, um, or you can do something more extreme like what I'm doing, which is 200 kilometers in a single month. And it's through the month of August. So um, you can sign up. And then from there, you can ask friends and family to help raise money for kids with cancer. So, and if they choose to go through the program and like actually pledge money, you do get a tax receipt and stuff. It's a legit organization. 
Um, and then that money gets pooled into our team and then we just kind of like rank our way up. I don't know. And there's like prizes and stuff like that that you can win. So I didn't do it last year because of COVID, but in 2019 I did it and I raised over a thousand dollars and I didn't have a team and it was just me. Like that was it. And I didn't advertise for it really. I just like told like a couple people and I posted on my Facebook, but people really came together for it. Anyways, heartbreaking, but really, really cool. And uh, like I said, it's just for fun. You don't have to join, but I made a team and it's called the Guardian Canada team. So if you want to join in, please do. I may or may not have pledged us for like a thousand kilometers for the month of August. So there's that, but hopefully one of you is like an absolute cyclist go-getter. Uh, but yeah, anyways, if you guys want to join, I'll leave a link down for that below. Like I said, if you're not into biking or anything like that, then don't, don't worry about it. But if you want to help out a good cause for free, get a bit of exercise, then this is actually, it's a really fun group. Anyways, I will talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.